Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. Come on in. <laughs> that's not snot, that's mainly urethras. Hey Epic Sauce, Tyler here. What you just saw was a scaled up version of myself. How does that work? Well, to understand that, we first have to understand what zooming truly is and what it means to optical zoom. See, I can record this and set to my 1080p resolution. I can zoom in on each of those pixels, but eventually there will not be enough quality in the actual image to make out, which is where we reach our limit. I can digitally do that by zooming down on my computer on that fence. That's the most basic type of zoom in. It just literally zooms in as far as it can go. But what happens when we try optical zoom? On the real cameras that have optical zoom, how would that work? Well, for the most part, optical zoom is just quite literally the zooming of the camera you're using, but using its own optics. What, what this means is the actual lenses of the camera are being shifted and moved around to magnify it without using any digital effects. We see this in telescopes in uh, truly large cameras, and that's why we see those large magnifiers on the cameras. Essentially, an optical zoom camera can actually zoom in on the stuff you were filming using lenses inside of the um, camera. Within a digital zoom camera, you actually have to take that and zoom in on the digital pixels themselves. What this means is an optical zoom camera does not lose any resolution when it is zooming on, on whatever you're recording. Which is good because you can make out detail. Now what are the limits of optical zoom? For the everyday camera, the zoom limit seems to be the actual size of the lens. If you notice, digital cameras like the one I'm using right now have very thin actual camera lens. But when you take that and you put it on an optical zoom camera, the um, actual size of it can get absolutely massive as you saw before. And theoretically, it, it should be limitless, but in reality there are things that prevent um, infinite zoom of cameras. Imperfections in glass, the wavelength of the light, and things like that would all prevent the eventual, basically, loss of detail in the zoom camera itself. Okay, so this is interesting now, but wouldn't you think natural selection, Darwin's theory, would result in a organism, if not humans themselves, having some sort of magnification? in their eyes. Imagine how cool that'd be. And with no loss in resolution, because obviously we're organic beings, we do not use pixels, that would be absolutely amazing. Really, the most basic solution to that is that that's a total misunderstanding of how evolution and natural selection really works. For that to work, you would have to actually have benefits. The, the first organism to have a small trait of this glass would need to benefit from it. And the problem with inventions like this is that it, that doesn't that simply doesn't work. Like 
yeah, you might have some organism that can see a little bit further, or that wouldn't even, that wouldn't even exist, because it had to be glass, so it had to be something that makes you zoom in farther. But it would have to be enough that actually benefits the mating capabilities of this animal, and that would simply never happen. I mean, we can invent something that makes it possibly be extremely hard, but just evolution itself would never allow that to happen. And this is actually the problem with a lot of things like that. Like, for example, um, let me take wheels. Wheels are amazing invention. We have things, they're cars. We have, we have my bike that I'm riding right here. The real question that we are all asking ourselves right now is, what is blue? Like seriously, what is blue? Well, Tyler, don't be absolutely ridiculous. Blue is obviously the color right there. How can you not see it? It's literally right in front of you. Right, right, it's obvious. Like, the blue is obviously the color blue. But explain to me using words what this color is. Are you serious? You really want me to describe the color blue for you? Like, do you understand how ridiculous that sounds? Like, everybody knows the color blue. It's it's not that hard to comprehend. Are you serious? Like, this is the color blue. How do you... Wait. How do you describe the color? And the hard truth hits. You see, the reality of the question is, you cannot actually describe the color blue. As simple as it sounds, there is no way in words to describe it a color. This is a blue bike. This, this part of the bike is blue. Now, if I told you that was red, well, you'd be like, it's not red. But if I visualize this as your red, and I both call, we both call it blue, there would be no way to tell the difference. Okay, okay. Now, what you're saying, I guess, is kind of correct, but you can't go that far. I mean, like, light is a wave, and there is literally a visible spectrum. Like, that's pretty scientific and realistic, don't you think? And actually, that is a common misconception about how the visible spectrum works. You see, we don't actually see, like, any visible... We, we don't we don't see any, like, actual physical stuff. Like, everything we see in the world is literally... Literally everything around you. It's just an interpretation by your brain turning that... That visible... That spectrum of the visible light range into colors in your brain that's only in there. Everywhere else, it doesn't exist. I mean, there's photons everywhere, but in reality, everybody sees different stuff. Um, this is pretty mind-blowing, if you think about it hard enough. Um, like, for that reason, your bunny could literally see infrared light. I mean, well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, like, if he could see infrared light, I'm pretty sure he would notice something by now, but, um... <laughs> Basically, like, the point is, there is no defined visible spectrum. It is simply an interpretation by your eyes, three cones, and how that processes in your brain. Another cool fact to consider is that your brain holds the information given to it for uh, one fifteenth of a second. This means every time you look at something, it is really 15 frames per second, in a weird way. So, what's really mind-boggling about that is that, um, if you wanted to, to make an animation or anything like that, stop motion picture, uh, 15 frames per second video, and that is all 
video to your eyes. Any below 15 frames per second, your eyes can tell the difference. Any above it, well, you can't tell the difference. This is literally a fluid video. Uh, you literally couldn't distinguish it if you tried. It, it is that fast. I mean, I guess there is some advantages to higher frame rates, but for the most part, 15 frames per second is all you need. But your brain doesn't seem to comprehend the frames and the timeline around you at the same rate. When you um, have a traumatic event and you are hurt and or if you have an emotional feeling about that, you remember that and you remember that really well. You see, I actually got my lip hit with a kazoo a little bit ago. I still remember that quite well, actually. Okay, we know this happens, but why exactly? Because, like, is your brain just pumping up some sort of slow-mo vision? Like, pumping up the frame rate in your eyeball? Because I think that's kind of wrong. Like, that, that doesn't seem exactly right. There must be some sort of different thing, because, like, there's no way that your brain can literally just... I mean, maybe. And actually, in 2015, there was a study done, and basically what they did was, they took neurosurgeons, they were volunteers, uh, participants for this drop test. It was, uh, I think around 100 or 200 feet, they were being caught by a net, and they accelerated, in around 3 seconds, they accelerated to 70 miles per hour. They said they experienced this around a third of a second longer than it actually took, and this was an average of, um, all of the volunteers that, that did the test there that day, so it wasn't just one person experiencing this. And to have that, and to actually experience that, you have to wonder, is it actually, it is, is that actually what's, what's happening? And does your brain speed up, do you um, detect more when you're falling or and when you're in danger or something like that? And the answer to the question is no. No, it does not. No, it does do something. It actually does something very interesting. So what it does is you actually create more memories when that happens. Your, your brain, that's like a learning experience. Your brain, like, it, it, it's parts of your brain are firing. Like, it's going off like crazy. And you will remember that. But it just, you, you experience kind of the same. What they did with the experiment was they flashed lights on your wrist. And they said, can you see these numbers, right? So they had control variable when they are falling, and they had, and then they actually had the independent variable when they were falling. And the results were you can't see any slower. You can't actually slow down time, which is quite obvious. Like, obviously, when do you expect that to happen? Um, but I find the interesting part is that the answer to the question is that it, it actually just your brain creating memories. That's that's the only reason that you feel time slower. And that's the same reason why you often remember a lot of fearful moments and possibly you want to forget them, but it, it, it's anything that involves emotion. And as always, thanks for watching.